Okay, so in this video, we're going to walk through how to use Terraformer and what the best use cases are for it. So if you haven't heard of this before, it is by Google. It's by a team at Google. They technically say it's not owned by Google, but I think it's the Waze SRE, as you see here. So Terraformer, if you're not familiar, is a tool to import existing resources and generate Terraform from it. So we're going to use AWS. Here are all the providers that they offer, though. Um, I'll link this in the description. You can check it out for yourself. But all the major cloud providers and lots of other things like Datadog, PagerDuty, et cetera. There's a lot of providers they support. Um, basically, if you have a ClickOps environment and you wanna move to Terraform, this is a good starting point where you say, hey, go look for these resources. Let's check for EC2, let's check for S3, or let's just scan the entire AWS account. It uses our access and it pulls that down and then generates Terraform files for us. So by the end of this video, you'll know whether or not you should use this and what the really best use cases are for it. So let's get into it. So right now we're in a blank repository. If I do LS, I just have a provider.tf. So I'll go ahead and open that up. And what you'll see here, we have very basic, just required providers, AWS, and then um, the providers AWS set here with US East 1. So here we are on the portal. There, these are our seven instances we're running. So we have um, web server example for QA, stage, and prod. Um, we're going to go ahead and just import everything that exists in this instance or in this. E we're going to go ahead and import everything in this AWS environment. So let's get into that. So here we are. Um, let's just do LS again. There's a provider. Go ahead and clear that out. So what we're going to do, this is assuming you already have Terraformer installed. That'll be on the page. So go ahead and just follow that if you haven't already. But you can install it with Brew if you're on Mac. So here we are now in the console. So I already have access key set up. So if I do run this command, so you will see I already have my AWS configure set up for my account here. So let's go ahead and run Terraform in it. And it initializes the AWS provider. And then we're going to do Terraformer with ER at the end here import AWS for our provider dash dash resources equals um, let's just do star for now. So that'll import everything. So this is going to start running. You'll see as it outputs, this is literally going to scan every single resource in AWS and see what currently exists and then import it and generate the Terraform that goes with it. Um, what you'll see here in a minute, this is extremely verbose. Basically, every single thing you can imagine will be available here. So it's not how you generally write the Terraform files, but if you have a lot of infrastructure that you just like urgently need to start managing with, then this is a good way to get there. But um, as you'll see, there are some kind of long-term drawbacks to it. Interesting. It just failed getting with a go error. It panicked. Um, just going to do EC2 instance for the demo. So we'll just import the EC2 instances. So what you'll see here, found seven services for the EC2 instances. Here is the um, instance and the name of it now. And that'll just copy the name from there. Uh, if you did watch my Terra Grunt video, then you'll notice that this is the same setup. I've ran the Terra Grunt apply and now I'm importing those resources here. So looks like everything's saved and it creates a TF state for it. So if we do LS now, you'll see we have it generated. Let's come over to our Visual Studio. So now we have a dot terraform here is where our provider is and then we have our generated and our terraform locked um, let's go into the generated here and we'll see instance.tf i'm actually going to come back to that here are the outputs so it generates all these outputs for us it just puts out the id of the instance um, provider stays the same and then now we have a tf state file so one thing you will have to change within terraformer to match whatever terraform version you're using so make sure you do that that'll be in the docs again uh, this is just using 12.31, but you can set it to be whatever you need. And here is the output. So here's our modules. Um, just general Terraform state file has everything in here, all of our resources, all the setup. And then the bulk of it here is now in an instance TF. So you will run into a few problems. And again, this is the drawback. If you look here, this is so verbose. Most of these values are probably defaulted to whatever they're set to already but you don't like, it doesn't know to not set default values or what they are and what they aren't. So it just gives you everything. So there's definitely some drawbacks. Like I said, you will have to clean this up, but if you're just needing to move quickly with infrastructure as code, say you have to meet a new compliance standard. I forget the NIST standard, but one of the NIST standards requires infrastructure as code. So if you're just have a huge click ops environment and you need that urgently, like I said, this is a good way to do it. Um, but I would be weary about like building, I would not be building infrastructure with click ops and then just generating the Terraform. That is a very bad idea. 
So if we scroll down here though, you will see all of the um, settings are in here. There's a few things as well that get deprecated. So like if you run this right now, this is not gonna work. So there will be cleanup, like I said, but really you can take this, you can run with it. You could break it out into modules. You can change the values and then use your Terraform from there. And the good thing is that it's all imported to the state. So we already have that. And so it knows now this is what currently exists. And then if you make changes, how the changes, just like normal Terraform, if we did it the traditional way. Okay, so this was a short video, but just wanted to show Terraformer. I've seen a lot of talk on Reddit on some of the posts that I've made about Terraform. Um, wanted to try it out myself and make a little video demoing it. So if this does apply to you, then hopefully it was helpful, but it's something good to know about. One quick thing I did want to note, I heard, um, or at least I had someone reply with a very interesting comment. A good way that you can use this is setting up a cron job to run daily. So this guy said that he set up a cron job every single day. It runs Terraformer import on all the resources and it looks for changes. So this way they manage all their Terraform traditionally and they build it out that way. But then they import all of it and generate the files every single day and they look for changes. So that way it's like a drift detector within their code. So if they build something with Terraform and then a user somehow goes in and changes some value or what if they make their S3 book or say they make an S3 bucket public that should not have that. That's something that happens in large companies all the time if they don't have the right access controls. Things of that nature, you can then set up the cron job to give you alerts when things change and that way you know exactly you could be running your terraform apply every day as well to help just resolve that but at least this way it's not just going to nuke any changes that are there because maybe it is something the developer did need and you need to set that up so it's more of just an alert like hey this did change you can go use it from there if you enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe for more terraform i have tons of terraform videos on the channel and if you're looking for terraform development go ahead and dm me on linkedin i'd love to have a chat with you